Hey, what's going on? It's Michael. Welcome to the channel. And when people ask me how much money they're going to save by cutting the cord, I ask them a question right back. Which type of cord cutter are you? I've got a good one for you today. I'm going to share the four types of cord cutters and the pros and cons of each. Let's get started. Number one is what I'm calling the max saver. There are a lot of people who don't want to pay anything or hardly anything for TV. And if that sounds like you, the max saver strategy is the one to pursue. Max savers spend between zero and $25 a month on streaming TV. And max savers are most likely to have one of these. This is the Mohu Leaf indoor antenna, but you could also have an attic or roof antenna if an indoor antenna doesn't work where you live. If it is an option, installing an antenna is probably the best decision that you can make to save money on TV over the years. You can get all your locals plus lesser known channels for just the one time antenna cost. Now, if you only rely on that antenna, you don't need internet service, but most people want it or have it already anyways, and that can open up a lot more options for 100% free TV. In a recent video on the best free and cheap streaming services, I laid out all my favorites. Free services like Pluto TV and the Roku channel offer a mix of live and on-demand content, and they are supported by advertising. Other free options that I like are Peacock, IMDb TV, and Tubi. Leave your favorite down below. But as the old saying goes, you get what you pay for, and with these free ad-supported services, You'll get access to plenty of movies and shows to stream, but they offer fewer original series compared to some of the other on-demand services I'm about to talk about. And that is why some Mac savers will want to supplement the TV they get from an antenna and free streaming services with maybe one or two paid apps. For example, Netflix. The standard plan is $13.99 a month as of this recording, and the best thing about it, no ads. So many people keep Netflix as their primary streaming service because it has so much original content with something for everyone in the family. Then they sprinkle in those free services that I mentioned for a little variety. And if you're willing to spend closer to $25 a month, the top of the Mac saver budget, you could add a second paid app to the mix, something like Hulu, Disney Plus, or even HBO Max. A lot of people who fall into this Mac saver category don't spend a whole lot of time watching TV, so the expensive cable bundle, it really never made sense for them. But it doesn't make sense either for the next type of streamer. Let's continue. Now on to number two, and I'm calling this the Ad Dodger. And this type of streamer is becoming a whole lot more common. For $50 a month or less, the Ad Dodger will assemble their own custom bundle of streaming services that do not run commercials. They may use an antenna for broadcast TV and the free apps that I mentioned earlier, but less often because those have ads. So take a look here. I put together this combo of services that keeps you right around $50 a month and it is commercial free. Netflix Standard, HBO Max with no ads, Hulu no commercials, and Paramount Plus also with no ads. The total, just over $50 a month. Now, Paramount Plus is not a real favorite of mine for on-demand content, but I included it in this example because it has a live TV component. And with that $10 a month plan, you will get access to a live feed of your local CBS station. So if you cannot pick up CBS with an antenna or another way, this is a way to get at least one of the big broadcast TV stations. Now, if that combo seems like a lot, it definitely is, but here's the reality. A J.D. Power report from 2021 found that it's in line with the average of four streaming services per household and a bill of $47 a month. Now, a lot of people could care less about all these new on-demand apps. They just want to watch their favorite cable TV networks with a streaming provider. There is a solution for that, and I'm going to talk about it right now. Number three, the cable TV clinger. I'm giving you a warning. Things are about to get expensive. Depending on your list of must-have networks, you can expect to pay $50 to $100 a month for a live TV streaming service, plus maybe one or two on-demand apps like the ones I've mentioned already included in that figure. Now, these services cater to people who want to break up with their cable or satellite provider, but they're not ready to give up the cable TV networks. Some of the major live TV streaming services include YouTube TV, 
Hulu Live, and Sling TV. In my video for first-time streamers, I recommend YouTube TV because, in my opinion, it just has the best of cable at a lower monthly price. The problem is, that price isn't necessarily cheap. It is $65 a month as of this recording, and that is just for the base plan. There are add-ons too, including a new 4K Plus add-on for $19.99 a month. And with YouTube TV, you get your sports channels, the major cable news networks, and your local stations. That's important if you can't use an antenna. And on top of all of that, YouTube TV has a great unlimited cloud DVR. What about the competitors? Well, Hulu Live is priced the same as YouTube TV as of this recording, and it includes Hulu's on-demand streaming library at no additional charge. Meanwhile, Sling TV is a lot cheaper than YouTube TV and Hulu Live, but you will get fewer channels and you won't have all of your local stations. You may like to think about these services as cable 2.0, and that is because they all feature bundles with dozens and dozens of networks. You're not able to pick and choose the five or 10 networks you actually watch and skip the rest, so you are still tied to the bundle in that way. But if you cannot live without your cable news and sports, one of these services may be right for you. But then there's Philo, a live TV service that is a little bit different than the others. It has a bundle to $25 a month and 60 plus networks, but it leans into entertainment and lifestyle programming. Philo does not carry locals or the major cable sports and news networks. And although some of the live TV streaming services like YouTube TV are expensive, they are still typically cheaper than cable. And the other advantage is that there are no contracts with streaming you can cancel any time. A lot of people who watch this YouTube channel take advantage of that flexibility and stop and start their subscriptions. And I bet a lot of regular viewers would consider themselves this next type of cord cutter. Here it is, number four, the strategic switcher. If all the major streaming services had their way, you'd sign up and never cancel. So they do not like this type of cord cutter but I think it is the best way to get a variety of content at a reasonable monthly price. Before I explain, let's take a step back. When you think about the three cord cutting paths that I've already covered, there are compromises with each of them. With the Mac Saver, you're relying mostly on over the air channels and free streaming apps, which both carry lots of ads. The Ad Dodger avoids the commercials, but you can pay up to $50 a month if you subscribe to three or four apps. It's great for on-demand, but this is not a live TV solution. And that's where the cable TV clinger comes in. You can get locals, sports, and news with most of these services, but the savings compared to cable may not be so impressive, and you may have little money left in your budget for on-demand apps. But the strategic switcher does not get tied down to one service or one type of cord cutting. Instead, this type of streamer may subscribe to a live TV streaming service like YouTube TV to watch a particular sport, but then they cancel it during the off season and use an antenna for live TV. And during those months without a live TV service, this streamer may sign up for a couple of on-demand apps to binge watch the shows their family and friends have already seen. When you signed up for cable or satellite TV, you probably had to sign a two-year contract but that is not the way that streaming works. You can decide every single month if you want to continue or if you want to cancel. My rule of thumb is that if I can't remember streaming three things from a particular service in the last month, I pause or cancel it. I created a free spending tracker to help you evaluate your subscriptions and whether they are worth your money. So I'll drop a link to that in the description. And please leave a comment below. Let me know which type of cord cutter you are and how much you spend every month on streaming TV. Thanks for watching today. See you next time.